Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Can-Am, the ride says it all. Polaris, the ultimate in off-road vehicles. Hatfield McCoy Trails, where hundreds of miles of off-road adventure await you today. Yamaha ATVs and side-by-side -side vehicles, real world tough. And by Honda, check out the growing family of Honda ATVs and side-by-sides. It's no secret Honda doesn't follow anybody when it comes to technology. Whether it's in their cars, motorcycles, or their ATVs, Honda's always trying to find a way to improve their vehicles without falling into a cookie cutter template set by the rest of an industry. So Honda's philosophy with technology and uh, our ATV and across our power sports line is uh, we, we definitely strive to improve in all areas. We, we don't like to settle with what we have and uh, we want to push the boundaries of technology. You know, we're one of the technological leaders in the industry and you know, we, we always strive to improve our performance in, in areas, especially when you consider transmission technology. Honda is the last ATV manufacturer to resist the move to a CVT style transmission in their ATVs in favor of an electronically shifted manual setup that includes automatic shift programming. So automatic DCT, it's a, it's a very unique system. Uh, for those in the automotive world, you've probably heard of it. Um, it's nothing new in that aspect, but for the power sports industry, it was introduced on, on our motorcycle lineup with the VFR 1200 in 2010, and it slowly moved to the power sports line in the ATV side. A dual clutch transmission means that there's two gears always engaged at the same time but operated on different clutch packs. So it's a seamless trans transition from one gear to the next. So for when you're going from first gear to second gear, second gear is already engaged. It's just shifting from one clutch to the second clutch. Um, we've innovated that into giving the option of a drive and an electronic shift mode. So you can put it in drive mode and allow the unit to shift itself based on the computer logic of a throttle position and engine RPM, or move it over to the electronic shift mode and you can actually hold each gear and, and be able to shift it like you would our previous electric shift model, very similar with a button style shifter on the left handlebar. And on top of that, the DCT comes with a, a high-low sub-transmission. So not only are you getting five gears in high, five gears in low. So we look at it as, a, as basically a 10-speed transmission, which we're very proud of. Sounds simple, right? But the question that begs to be answered is why? And the answer to that question may be a lot simpler than you originally thought. Um, we have a very diverse regional aspect of many customers' lifestyles that require a manual transmission, and that's what they prefer. If they have a towing application or some kind of specific need where they need to hold one specific gear, um, that really gives them a huge benefit um, to using that. And it gives the customer you know, a lot of options when it comes to towing, hauling, climbing, and uh, any of those applications where you would really need some kind of a variant of a gear set from high to low. It's one of the, one of the ideas where we listen to the customer. Um, we've maintained that. We want to give that customer what they need for the, the direct region that they live in and for the specific needs that they use it for. Of course, the next question on most people's minds is what are the drawbacks? There are customers that, that feel that electronics on their ATVs can, you know, can be of concern to them in their application. Um, but again, one of the things at, at Honda, you know, with this automatic DCT transmission, it's gone through our rigorous testing standards. Um, we're very proud of our durability and our quality standards. So these units were, were tested and developed in America. You know, we have a full research and development facility um, located in Ohio, as well as our manufacturing plant in South Carolina. And that, it gives us a unique aspect of being able to design, test, develop, and manufacture all within the confines of the areas where we sell our units. Um, we're very proud of our testing procedures, and it's one reason why Honda has the durability and quality standards that uh, you know, we feel kind of rise above. So looking forward at automatic DCT technology, we're definitely gonna continue to evolve this system. It really comes down to efficiency. This, this technology you know, increases the efficiency of the engine uh, drive line and getting the power to the wheels, yeah, that's what it's meant to do. It's meant to be you know, very efficient, very connected, and give the rider that you know, connection to the, the power van that, that they really want.
Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Brimstone, where the journey is your reward. In last week's episode, we were following the rebirth of our Wildcat Z1100 turbo project that's being built by Pace Off Road, a company owned and operated by NASCAR's own number 16 driver, Greg Biffle. In last week's episode, we were able to see our freshly powder coated frame receive some of the new components, including the brand new Z1100 turbo motor that fits like a glove. Installing the motor into the mounts is one thing, but assembling all of the components and fluid systems that makes this motor come to life and stay healthy, well, that's a big job. And Greg is the best guy to tell us just how important these systems are and how much work it took to get them perfect. And now, the continuation of our Pace Off-Road build. Yeah, so this build, we're really excited about this uh, Dirt Tracks Wildcat Z1 swap. There's so many things, details that go into these builds. You know, we have the Fluidine oversized oil cooler, you know, with a spall fan on it. We, we upgrade the radiator. We use the, the factory core and put aluminum tanks on it, make a double pass. So, the, the, you know, we upgrade the radiator. All these things, our wiring harness, make this thing so unique. You know, all steel braided hoses. Uh, we want this thing to be plug and play and, and go out and beat on it, have a good time and uh, have the reliability factor of a stock machine. So one of the unique things about our swap is, is the, the water system, the, the cooling system. It's very important to have a surge tank at the highest point, and we've done that on this machine. Lot, we got lots and lots of time of R&D and testing at our, our property and then at the desert with the Z1 swap and have learned all the nicks and crannies of the Z1 engine. And one is getting all the air out of the system. So this design that we've done with this accumulator tank up on top and run the water through it, it gets the air out of the system and we reroute some of the plumbing from the snowmobile as well on the cooling system. And it's just one of the things that we've figured out through our builds and design and testing that have made this swap such a great machine. While using the best parts and having the knowledge of what should work is key, Greg doesn't rely on strictly what should work. He uses NASCAR spec data systems to ensure that every system on the car is working at its peak performance. So we're really fortunate to be where we're at in kind of the NASCAR capital because there, there are so many neat companies here. Uh, for one, the powder coating. You know, we, we have some you know, world-class powder coating people here that can do the hammer finish on the on the suspension, you know, that really stands up to the elements we put it through in this red. We've done so many cool colors and and uh, with them putting the clear on it, preserve the color, it's amazing. And then, you know, when we did all of our testing in the beginning with the Z1 engine, you know, we had probably a $50,000 or more data system on board that recorded everything that was going on from, we had probably five temperature points, four oil temperature points, you know, with the oil cooler, without the oil cooler, what did it do to the water temperature when we added the oil cooler to, we, we measured how many gallons per minute the water system's flowing. Uh, we tested three different radiators, you know, CNR, Fluidine, the stock radiator. And it, you know, we had high speed cameras in the belt housing, uh, watching what the belt's doing. And we had two temperature points, uh, inlet air, ambient temperature inside the housing, outlet air. So we did so much uh, testing and we're able to have resources around this area. When we did the carbon fiber clutch cover, you know, we had a Debotech, one of the leading carbon manufacturers here in the area, help us design the cover and make it. And, uh, you know, I mean, all these processes take so much time. It took us probably six, seven months to do the belt cover and, and be, you know, and we had to do two versions of it. So, you know, how much molds cost, we had to go and do it again. There's so many resources here uh, with all the radiator manufacturers, data systems, McLaren, all that, we were able to, to really do some really cool stuff. And we're not done yet. Uh, we got a lot more to come. You know, we're getting ready to produce shock pots on these things and, and do uh, whoops testing and jumping and get shock speed data, inches per second. We can bring it back to the shock dyno and try and build a shock and spring package uh, for all different kinds of riding. So um, we're really fortunate to be where we're at and uh, be able to bring a lot of this technology to the side-by-side -side market that probably, to be honest with you, some of the factory you know, Polaris or Articat or, or BRP may not have and may not have been able to do some of that testing. When it all came together, there truly were few words to properly describe this build. Greg and the crew at Pace Off Road did such an outstanding job with this build, the only thing left to do was fire the engine and give it a test. 
a little 112 octane race fuel and a few cranks, and the Z1100 came to life. Utilizing the gauge package off the Arctic Cat snowmobiles, there is a huge amount of engine info available, as well as the standard warm-up required before the motor will give full advance. And once it did warm up, well, we thought we'd follow optimal break-in procedure and go straight to race mode. pushing 28 plus pounds of boost and making nearly 280 horsepower. The stock tires did not stand a chance. While we followed this build from start to finish, we're not sure exactly of what it's capable of. So stay tuned to next week's episode where we're headed to Glamis, California with Greg to see exactly what the Wildcat can do and add in a few more accessories that hadn't arrived yet. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Super ATV, the industry leader in aftermarket parts and accessories for the off-road market. Earlier this season, Can-Am contacted five media outlets and proposed a challenge. Build the coolest Maverick XDS Turbo possible in 30 days, and then let the public judge who's his best. They called the competition, what would you do to a Maverick? And the rules were simple. Use a minimum of $2,000 in BRP accessories. The rest was completely up to us. When we sat down to brainstorm ideas for our build, we knew the easy route would be to create a rock crawler or a mud runner using just bolt-on parts. But we wanted to build something completely different. It just so happens 2015 marks the 70th anniversary of the end of the Second World War. It also just so happens we've recently been in touch with Terratech, a company that specializes in law enforcement and border patrol off-road vehicle platforms and training. Mike at Terratech suggested we commemorate the 70th anniversary of the Second World War by building a military-style Maverick that incorporates design aspects of a World War II Jeep into the modern Maverick platform. And it also just so happens, he knew the perfect guy to make this concept a reality. Willys Acres is one of North America's most respected and sought after military Jeep restoration companies. Marcus does some of the highest quality and most accurate restorations of World War II Willys Jeeps on the planet. He definitely has the technical ability to build our Maverick, but almost more important than that is the fact that he understands the concept we're after. After a number of meetings and design iterations, we were ready to start the transformation. The Maverick XDS Turbo is the first factory turbocharged side-by-side -side ever produced. It generates an imposing 120 horsepower and has struck fear into the hearts of its competition. We needed a name for our project that encapsulated these same attributes and Mike from Terratech had the perfect answer. The first special service force was an elite group of Canadian and American soldiers. It was the first time soldiers from both countries had formed a single unit. During the war, they were so successful and so feared by the enemy, they became known as the Black Devil Brigade. And with them as our inspiration, we named our Maverick project the Black Devil. Now let's take a look at what makes it so special. For starters, this is a 120 horsepower Maverick XDS Turbo, and that's pretty special all by itself. But the idea for this build was to maintain the performance and comfort of the Maverick, but add the functionality and cool military style of a Willys Jeep. Marcus from Willys Acres started by stripping the Maverick down and refinishing a number of the metal parts in a flat olive drab color. He then began to design and fabricate a box for the rear of the Maverick that would emulate the back of a Jeep and improve the usability of the Maverick in general. The bed is made from tubular steel that matches the roll bar. Two Scepter gas cans are mounted inside and a full-size spare is mounted on the rear. Military Jeep-style lighting is flush mounted on either side of the rear panel. A roof, door kit, rock rails, and A-arm guards were all supplied by Can-Am and were finished in olive drab. The roof was modified with a custom rack and a Rigid Industries RDS 40-inch curved LED light bar. Inside, you'll find a set of PRP GT SE suspension seats and five-point harnesses. UTV Inc. supplied the intrusion bar and the dash mount plate for our Lowrance Elite 5M GPS system mounted in the center. 
UTV Inc. also supplied a bash bar that helps protect a warm Pro Vantage 4500 pound winch. Finally, ITP stepped up with a set of their Black Ops SD Series beadlock wheels wrapped with Ultracross R-Spec tires. Some other modifications you might notice are the snorkels for the air intake and CVT intake mounted high on the B-pillar and some additional grab handles mounted on the roll bar. You might also notice some extra hardware on the roof and a little something special for the passenger. During World War II, Willys Jeeps were often fitted with both light and heavy machine guns. Our Maverick is set up with a pair of M249 LMGs. One is mounted on the roof and operated by a gunner in the bed the second is swivel mounted on the left side of the roll cage and is operated by the passenger. The outstanding graphics on this vehicle were done by Mario Designs and MotorsportWraps.com and they all have special meaning. From the actual Black Devil Brigade crest on the hood to military style badging to recruitment posters on the insides of the doors and a tribute to the Black Devil Brigade on the underside of the roof, we think the Black Devil Maverick does a great job of paying tribute to its namesake, who were the first truly Can-Am battalion of soldiers. We had two specific goals in mind for our Black Devil Maverick project. First, we wanted it to seamlessly blend cool military style with the ultra high performance Maverick XDS platform. And second, we wanted it to grab people's attention and give them an opportunity to reflect on all the men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice in defense of our freedom. We think the Black Devil Maverick did an excellent job of both. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Triton Trailers. Know it, own it, haul it, and buy Seismic UTV Accessories. Get more done, have more fun. It's no surprise that the XP1K has been dethroned of its once highest horsepower status. The XP1K is still a beast of a side-by-side, -side, but there are a few things that you can do to improve its performance. The XP1K by no means is soft. It's not falling behind or out of contention, but it does fall 13 horsepower short of the all-new Maverick DS Turbo. While there are pros and cons to both of these side-by-sides, it's my opinion that more horsepower is always welcome. So how do you make your 1K compete with forced induction? I'm glad you asked. The truth is there's a lot of ways to increase horsepower, but also to manipulate the current horsepower that you have and make it feel like a whole lot more. A clutch kit is, in my opinion, the best way to manipulate what you've currently got to work with. And Dalton not only makes clutch kits, they make what I believe to be the best off-road clutch kits going. And for the XP1K, they have something special. Your typical clutch kit's going to include a primary or secondary spring, possibly both, and some new weights. But this, this is a whole lot better. Not only are there primary and secondary springs, there's also quick adjust flyweights with adjustable steel mass weight rivets to account for different tire sizes. And to top it off, we have a beautiful custom billet helix. This is the first clutch kit of its kind for a side-by-side -side that I have ever seen, and it's more similar to the snowmobile industry's kits that deliver huge performance advantages. Adding to the increased responsiveness of the clutches, I'm opting to remove the stock exhaust and replace it with something that's far better. MBRP is a company whose focus is performance. If it doesn't make power, they don't build it. These products are tested, dynoed, and retested to ensure a performance advantage and make sure you're getting more for your money. The exhaust note from a 1K, well, it's all right. It's a stock exhaust. But when you put on an MBRP exhaust, you not only get a performance advantage, you get a sound advantage that's gonna give you the warm fuzzies right down to your throttle foot. 
MBRP Performance Exhausts are smartly designed and don't require a PhD to install. On the 1K, it's as easy as removing a few bolts, a few pipe springs, and sliding out the old, heavy, and truthfully, ugly rusted stock exhaust. I mean, nobody wants that much rust on their side-by-side, -side, that out in the open. While a nice looking exhaust will give you credibility with your buddies, a good performing exhaust is what you really want, and the MBRP Powertech 4 performs. The Powertech 4 system totally changes the way your 1K looks, but more importantly, performs and sounds. This is a custom built system that is specifically designed for the 1K, not a ready made piece that's been reworked to fit. This is custom designed from the ground up for this application, and it shows. While there's never a shortage of performance parts that you can buy for your side-by-side, -side, there are few that actually deliver performance results. If you're looking to change your 1K and increase performance, these are two of the best products that I've found. Dirt Tracks Television has been sponsored by Polaris, the ultimate in off-road vehicles. Can-Am, the ride says it all. MBRP Performance Exhaust, making power with MBRP. Arctic Cat, share our passion. And by Honda, check out the growing family of Honda ATVs and side-by-sides. If you enjoyed this video, post a comment and let us know what you think. Then click this link to subscribe and that link for more great videos from Dirt Tracks TV.